Okay, here I go. Awesome. Welcome back to an extended version of Influence 15, Leveraging LinkedIn. We've had a few technical difficulties this morning, so thank you for your patience. Uh, I have four specific topics that we are going to cover today based on your feedback from the session. Your feedback was specifically targeted at four particular areas, and I would like to cover those questions specifically. After that, the session will be open up to Q&A, and I will answer your questions live on the spot. But before we get into that, I'd like to do a thank you to Thule Gardner. She is your chief content explorer. She's been helping us, and she's going to be the admin of the session today. This way she can handle the technology, and I can keep my focus on you. Her specialty is helping experts profit from their intellectual property by leveraging technology. She is an NSA member, though I don't know how long, so Tuli, you're welcome to chime in and fill that information in. 14 years. Awesome. 14 years, and her website, if you're interested, is expandyourterritory.com. So, You'll notice that you are looking at the home screen of LinkedIn. This is what's called your news feed. This is where you can share an update or when you post in a LinkedIn group, your post automatically appears as an update. So if you remember the LinkedIn success cards that I handed out at the session, if you'll notice your daily LinkedIn tips, you should never, not never, but you don't need to do a status update because if you're participating in groups, your status updates will already be taken care of for you. There's a time and a place for status updates, but don't focus them on your priority. You actually want to focus on your engagement in the group. So let's jump over to endorsements. When you click on profile, LinkedIn tries to be very helpful. And in being helpful, they automatically put your profile in edit mode and ask you if you would like to update a particular area. We're going to skip that for now since we do have limited time. And we're going to scroll down to skills and endorsements. Perhaps, the, I'm pretty sure it was the number one request or complaint or frustration that I got from you at the session was how do you manage your endorsements? We talked about at the session why they're so important. To recap, endorsements are LinkedIn's way of verifying that what you say you know and you're an expert in is actually true. They ask, LinkedIn asks your connections if you are actually an expert in these particular areas. So if you click on Add Skill, this will take you into the Edit Skills and Endorsement section of your profile. And you'll notice this top section here. It's your Skills and Endorsement settings. Do you want to be endorsed? Yes, you do. The more endorsements that you have for a particular skill, the higher in the search rankings you will, you will uh, appear. Yes, you do want to be included in the suggestions to contacts. The reason for this is like you, your contacts are busy. And the easier that you can make it for your connections to endorse you, the more likely you are to get endorsements. That doesn't mean you won't get endorsed for things you don't want on your profile, but we'll show you how to manage that in about a minute. Show me suggestions to endorse your contacts. Yes, you do want to see this for the exact same reason that we talked about earlier. You are busy. You don't have time to go to all of your 500, 1,000, 5,000 connections and endorse them for the skills that you know they have. Let LinkedIn help you make your time on LinkedIn more effective. This is my personal preference, but I do not 
want LinkedIn to send me notifications via email when connections endorse me. The reason for this is I get enough email. I'm willing to bet you have that same view too. I don't need to receive an email for something that is in essence trivial. I do want to receive an email if someone sends me a message on LinkedIn or if someone comments on one of my posts because I want to be able to get back to them as soon as I possibly can. So use your notifications wisely. Time management, another popular complaint or request on how to leverage LinkedIn. You'll notice that here's the box where you can add a skill. As you start typing, you'll notice that LinkedIn makes suggestions. These are terms and phrases that are predominantly used on LinkedIn and what people are regularly searching for. So it is better to use a skill that is in LinkedIn skills than it is to create your own. It's counterintuitive from a search engine optimization perspective because from a search engine, uh, an SEO perspective, you do want to be more specific. On LinkedIn, you want to stick with the predetermined ones. Now, every one of these skills down below, you'll notice has a box around it. You can take it and move it anywhere that you want. So you can have the order be whatever you want it to be. Some people like to have it in the order of the number of endorsements. So my highest is marketing, maybe that should be first, maybe not, and then the ones with the least at the bottom. I've also tested moving some of the lower endorsements up higher because when people do view your profile, they see an odd shape when it comes to your endorsements and the mind wants to fill that shape up and make it even. So that is a subtle way to trick people into endorsing you because visually they want to see that box of equal endorsements. And of course the X means you can delete any new, any skill that is currently listed. So when I first had created my skills, I kept getting endorsed for analytics and research. Well, yes, analytics are a key way, a key tool that I use in working with my clients, and I do a lot of research for them. It's not my specialty. There are tools that I use, and I didn't want to become known for that. I didn't want someone to contact me and say, I see you're an expert in research. Would you be doing, would you be willing to research this for me? So I would click the X and I would delete that skill. Now here's the gem. Manage endorsements. When you click on that, you'll see all of your skills in a list. You can click on any one of these skills and see a list of everyone that has endorsed you. You can scroll through this list and you can choose who you want to be visible and who you do not want to be visible. If you want to hide an, endo and if you want to hide an endorsement, you simply uncheck the box. We'll pick on Tracy. She's also an NSA member and she's usually my, my subject for picking on when it comes to social media demonstration. So now that I've unchecked Tracy, if I were to click save, her endorsement would no longer be visible. She would never receive any notification that I have removed her endorsement. And if I were to go back in and change my mind later, I could recheck Tracy and then she would be visible on my profile again. So why would you choose to hide someone's endorsement? There's two main reasons. One, it's somebody like your mom or your aunt 
where they're trying to do it to help you, but they really have no personal experience in what you do professionally. Or just the fact of seeing your mom endorse you could leave your uh, credibility in question. Another reason, in Seattle a few years ago, there was a major school scandal where there were people who had uh, embezzled some money. And that became a very popular question of, well, what do I do? This person has endorsed me. They've written me a recommendation. How do I protect myself but yet not put my professionalism and my business credibility into question? And this is how you do it. You can hide the endorsement of people who you're not sure if you really want to be associated with them. And the same thing happens with recommendations. You do not have to show any recommendation that anyone writes for you. So once you make your changes, and like I said, you can literally go through every skill that you have and make the decision of who you want to whose endorsements you want to be visible and whose endorsements you don't. Once you make those changes, click Save, and then it'll be updated. So remember that box that I was talking about? This is that box right there. People like the mind likes to see perfect shapes. So if on occasion you move one of your skills that doesn't have as many endorsements up. Some people, when they look at your profile, will be like, oh, I, I have to endorse you for this because it's not the same width as all of your other skills. Let's balance it out. They don't necessarily consciously know that's why they're doing it, but that's actually what they're doing. So we covered endorsements. And let's go into groups. Let's pulse. We'll use Patricia Fripp's group, Fripp VT. Of course, you're welcome to join it. When you, the first question I get is, how many groups should I belong to? LinkedIn says that you can belong to up to 50 groups. If you join subgroups, that number can go much higher. My recommendation for you is I would rather have you join and actively participate in five groups than join 50 and not participate in any of them. Be strategic and realize your limitations. What are you willing to commit to? What are you not willing to commit to? And joining a LinkedIn group doesn't have the requirement that joining an actual organization in person does. You can join and leave groups at will. So you can join a group, you can test it out, see if it's a good fit for you. If it is, great, stay. If not, leave the group. There's no reason for you to stay. So having said that, when you go to a group and if the group allows you to see the discussions, or once you get access to the group and you can look at the discussions, what you'll actually want to do is kind of do a quick scroll through. See what kind of discussions there are. Now, what's really good about Patricia's group is, yes, she starts most of the discussions, whether it be sharing an article, sharing a video, or even sharing a tip. But you see, there's lots of comments. That means there's a high engagement rate in this group. It means you have the ability to build relationships with people in this group. So if we click on See Comments, you'll see that there are numerous comments on just this one post. If we go back to Discussions, and we scroll down, you'll see that almost every one of the conversations in here have a fair number of comments. 
Again, this means it is a highly active group and that people are participating. Another quick tip when it comes to groups. Yes, you can click like on any status update. You can click like on any pulse post. You can click like on any LinkedIn group discussion. But like doesn't start or continue a conversation. So if you click like, also add a comment. Why do you like this? Why should become your favorite word when it comes to social media? When you ask why and you engage with a why mentality, you start conversation and you continue conversation. Like and favoriting on Twitter is a conversation stopper. You're acknowledging the person, but there's no reason for them to continue to converse with you. And there's also no SEO benefit to you if you just click like. Now, another quick tip with subgroups. If you join a group over to the left here, or right, sorry, you'll see subgroups. That means a group has groups within the groups, and this is how you can get over the 50 group marker. You can, once you join a group, you can click on any of these subgroups and join them and then participate in them just as if they are a separate group in and of themselves. So now another quick tip when it comes to groups. Again, I'm all about managing how much email I get. This widget up here allows you to see the settings. These are your group settings meaning this is what settings you want to set for this particular group and for each group you can set them to be different. Do you want the logo to be displayed on your profile? I think I have all of the groups that I belong to displayed on my profile. It's not a status thing, it's simply I'm involved in the community and if you want to build a relationship with me, here's how you can connect with me. Do you want to receive a daily digest or a weekly digest? This asks you for your email address. Personally, I do not want to receive an email for uh, each new discussion. That's too many emails for me and I belong to way too many groups. Remember, each of these settings is for each individual group. So you can click on this widget in every group and customize these settings. The digest email. For some groups I choose daily digest and for other groups I don't receive a digest, uh, a shortened version of an email because I'm on LinkedIn regularly enough that receiving the email becomes redundant. I usually already know because up here LinkedIn will tell me who has engaged in the discussions I've participated in or who has uh, engaged in one of my groups. I do allow the group manager to send me email and I also allow members of this group to send me messages. This becomes key in marketing your business. Build relationship by participating in a group first and then you can begin to reach out to people through groups and have direct conversations and communications with them independent of the group. This is key. Once you get your settings set the way you want them, you just hit save changes and it'll save. You can also share the group and I'm a manager of this group so I have managed but you will not have that tab. Now a quick tip when posting in a group. This is your discussion title is just like a headline on a newspaper or a blog title. What is a short 
conversational but snappy phrase to entice people to want to read further. It should not be sales promotion. It should be short and conversational. Then, in the details, it's why are you sharing this? What conversation would you like to have? Explain that out and ask a question. In this case, Patricia is asking, what tips or strategies do you have that are successful for you? And that's what gets the conversation started. She is setting the tone of the conversation that she would like to have in follow-up to her article. Now, because this is Patricia's group, she can share her own articles. However, if you are in another group and sharing your own articles, if you remember, I mentioned that that is banned in some groups. It is against the rules. So you want to have a tribe of people, build a social media tribe where I share your articles, you share my articles. And you don't want the same person to share the articles all the time because then that becomes known that Johnny is always sharing your articles and you're always sharing Johnny's articles. So just like from a networking perspective, you have different people that you network with for different reasons. When you write articles, who is the best person to share your article that it is complimentary and boosts your credibility? And the same thing for you sharing other people's articles. Okay, so let's jump over. Oh, and by the way, I accidentally approved uh, my latest or my last round of connection requests. So if you're willing, send me a connection request and then I can use you as an example for how to respond to connection requests. So before we do that, get into connection requests, let's look at Pulse. And in Pulse, remember Pulse is LinkedIn's version of a blog, but it is not a replacement for your blog. It is another marketing touch point. It is another way for you to reach people in your network and people you have yet to meet. So quick tips on navigating Pulse. LinkedIn is always making changes, so things usually move on occasion, and this is one of them. Pulse is the title of the blog, and if you click on these three dots here, you'll see, assuming it stays open, the top categories that Pulse has available. You can click on Discover More, but if you click on any one of these categories, you will see articles that correspond with that particular article or with that particular topic. Now when you're posting on Pulse, yes, you must have an image, but the image must be a free to share image. Give credit if credit is due, but do not use copyrighted images. LinkedIn used to be very firm on that. I've not tested it to know if they still are, but it is still a best practice an ethical practice, and as a professional speaker, you are fully aware of the ethical issues and the importance of that. At the bottom of your article, it is A-OK -okay to put a line and then a mini bio. You do not want your full bio because from the click of a button, they can go look at your profile. So this should simply be what you would put at the bottom of an article. Think of in Speaker Magazine. At the end of the article, there is a sentence or two that describes the author of that particular article. That information goes here. And this is a relatively new feature. When you are publishing to Pulse, LinkedIn now lets you add three keywords per article. These are keywords that are related to the article, 
and keywords that are going to help build you credibility. So having said that, whatever you publish on Pulse should be related to you professionally. What are you an expert in? What do you work with your clients on? These are business related articles. These are not bit strip comics. These are not formal press releases. They're in first person. I, me, my, and myself are perfectly acceptable. And conversational tone is perfectly acceptable. This is LinkedIn's way of taking the, the stereotype of sterile business language out of it and letting the LinkedIn users see you as a person. So let's click on maybe or not. There we go. We'll click on customer experience. Maybe. There we go. And what this will do is the category of customer experience will bring up all of the articles that have recently been published in Pulse. Because this is one of my keywords and one of the areas that I work in, it would be a good idea for me to skim through these articles and start writing comments. So let's say I read Real Leadership and I scroll down, I get to the bottom and there is a comment here. Brandy puts in, from her work experience, it's as though executive leaders don't care as long as they're making money. She's commenting on the article. It's her opinion, but it's also her take. This is a good start for a comment. It is much better than, great article, good job, you're my favorite. Those comments don't help you from an SEO perspective they don't build your credibility, and they don't start a conversation. So what do you like about the article, and what do you disagree with, or what do you have a different opinion on? Try to keep your comments at a minimum of two to three sentences, and feel free to expand upon that. And, and then, like I said, start a conversation. As you comment, it's also okay to hit reply on someone else's comment and start a conversation with them. It's not just about communicating with the author, it's about communicating with other people on LinkedIn and get that thread going. Another trend I've seen is that people will respond to the author or respond to the person leaving the comment through a private LinkedIn message instead of on the article. That defeats the purpose. The actual purpose is to start a conversation. The private messages don't give you any SEO benefit. Publishing on an article does. The more popularity that this article has, the more likes, the more comments, the higher it'll appear in the search engines. And if your name's attached to that, the more credibility you also get. So make your comments public, but also make them respectable. Okay. And now, connection requests. Let's click on home, see if we, there we go, we've got connection requests. Now you already know that if we hit, if we scroll over the man with a plus sign, I should give him a name, we could easily scroll down and click accept to Ken or to Deb. We could easily do that. However, that just instantly connects and does not start a conversation. Remember, our goal is to start or continue a conversation with every social media activity that we do. So instead of doing that, 
we're going to click on Messages. Now we've been taken to My Inbox. And if you notice, over to the left, we're going to click on Invitations. We still see Ken. We still see Deb. We see Accept and Ignore, exactly like what we had access to up here. What's different is this down arrow. We can hit Reply Do Not Accept Yet, and I can send Ken a message. My standard message is, Hi Ken, thanks for reaching out. I'm happy to connect with you. May I ask how you heard about me and why you are interested in connecting? Thank you in advance for your help, Mel. Now a common question I get when I reveal that is, well, why are you saying that? Then they're going to expect you to connect with them. I say, I'm happy to connect with you, not I will connect with you. Prior to me adding that phrase of I'm happy to connect with you, I would have people respond to me saying, I'm so sorry if I offended you. I just am trying to network and get to know people on LinkedIn, and I don't really understand the tool, so I'm really sorry. And that wasn't my intent. Adding that phrase of I'm happy to connect with you tells them up front that yes, I too want to network, and I too want to get to know you. But since Ken is my, my uh, example for today, we'll send him a slightly different message. Hi, Ken. Thank you for your participation. I really appreciate it. And am looking forward to getting to know you better. And then we'll send the message. When Ken responds, his message will appear in messages. I have done nothing to change his connection request. I have simply sent him a message before clicking accept. Now there is a practice where you can, once you accept someone's connection request, you can send them a message, hey, thanks for connecting. I'm looking forward to getting to know you. Please let me know how I can help you. Okay, you can do that, but that doesn't give me a reason to reach out to you. I know my message to Ken was a little vague, but he's, he's my guinea pig for this session. So I'm sure Ken and I will continue our conversation later. But that is your trick for connection requests. You'll also notice that LinkedIn makes suggestions over here to the right. It tells me whose birthday it is. And also back on your home screen, LinkedIn makes suggestions about how you can keep in touch. You can like, you can comment, or you can skip. If you hit skip, LinkedIn will just wait and ask you in about an hour. Now let's say you hit like. We'll go up here to notifications. I've done this a bit lately, hoping that I would have some, let's see. Um, oh, here we go. Here's an anniversary update. I really don't need to see lots of updates that are about people congratulating somebody else for their success. I made my congratulations, I liked it, I commented on it. So if you just scroll over, you'll see this X in the top and it says unsubscribe. You'll click that, you'll click unsubscribe, and you will stop receiving notifications for whatever it is. 
So that is another way that you can streamline and save time on your activities on LinkedIn. So now I'd like to open it up for questions because now I've answered the top questions that you had given me from our session and I will happily answer what questions you have uh, after today's session and anything that was not addressed at Influence. So feel free to add it into the chat or I don't know, Tuli, if we can allow we it. We actually have a uh, question box or we can unmute everyone or if you uh, click raise your hand, I can unmute you one at a time. Perfect. Let's do that. Okay, so if you look in the panel on the right, there will be a little hand. If you click that icon, it will show that you're raising your hand and I'll unmute you. You can ask your question. Alternatively, go ahead and use the questions box and type it in there and Melanie will be able to see that as well. Okay, Angie's got a question. Go ahead, Angie, you're unmuted. Mel, she's typed it into her uh, into the question box. Do you see it there? I actually do not. Okay, I'll read it to you. Hi, Mel. Great session. Question: What are the benefits of a LinkedIn Premium membership? This is a great question, and I get it all the time. Before I do answer it, though, I do have to tell you that I do have a premium account, and I do highly recommend it. I will not receive any compensation from LinkedIn. I'm not a LinkedIn employee, but I do state that up front this way. You understand the full spectrum of it. The biggest value from LinkedIn is the statistics that you get. When you look at who's viewed your profile, you can see detailed trends of who is looking at your profile. You can also see more information about the people looking at your profile. And it goes further back too. So now I have this track record or this database, if you will, of information of people who have looked at my profile and I don't know why. Yoshi is a gentleman that I met, I don't know, seven years ago when he was creating a startup that would, created a competitor similar to, I'm drawing a blank on what it is. Oh, what was his startup? I don't know, irrelevant. Anyway, uh, but I haven't talked to him in a long time. Me seeing that Yoshi is looking at my profile gives me the perfect opportunity to touch base with him yet again. It also allows me to, I don't know who Craig is, he's a second degree connection, but it gives me a reason to look into Greg further and build that relationship. So the statistics and the data that you get from the premium account is what is of most value. Also, you will get what are called LinkedIn mail or uh, in mail. And that is where you can send, let's go back, click skip for right now. LinkedIn will make a suggestion. We'll look at Bryant right now. I'm not connected to Bryant, but I can send him an in mail depending on what premium account that you have will depend on how many in-mail messages you get per month. If you don't use them, you get to keep them. So you can build up an in-mail kitty and that's what I do. There are many people who choose to use in-mail for sales pitches. I actually don't. When I do in-mail, I actually do it for building relationships with people. For example, uh, you might have heard me talk while we were at Influence how I just started a master's program. Prior to applying to the master's program, I used InMail to outreach to graduates of the same program to ask them their take. What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? If they could improve one thing, what would it be? What would you like to see the program change? and it got a conversation started.
by me sending an email that was not a sales pitch, it almost, it guaranteed, I'd say, I think there was one person that did not respond to me. Everybody responded to me but that one person, and that one person didn't even have a photo on LinkedIn, so I'm willing to bet they just didn't use LinkedIn. But they responded to me. We had multiple conversations. I met with them in person, added a few connections, and now I know they'll take my call. Believe it or not, the people on LinkedIn are just like you. They don't like to be pitched. They don't like to be talked at. They want to be talked with and included in the conversation. They want to help. The more you can create an online LinkedIn marketing strategy or social media strategy as a whole that is around those concepts of them wanting to help you or you providing the information so they can help others, the more successful you're going to be. Next question, Tuli. Pulse question, do you need a separate subscription to this? That's from Kathy. A separate subscription to what? Pulse, LinkedIn Pulse? No, that is also a great question. Uh, LinkedIn acquired Pulse, I believe it was about three years ago, and they slowly rolled it out. Now everybody on LinkedIn has access to it. If you click on Home, You'll notice here you share an update. This is a status update to appear in this news feed right here. You can upload a photo or you can publish a post. Publishing a post is publishing to Pulse. Cool. Okay, next question from LL Woolmack. If you are completely anonymous, can you still see who is viewing you? It's, uh, let me reword the question because you're actually addressing two separate situations there. When you choose to have your profile completely anonymous, that means no one can see you. This is social media and it's meant to be social. LinkedIn in particular, if you are looking for a job, if you're looking to get hired for a speaking gig, People want, will not call you in for an interview or call you as a prospect unless they can see who you are and get an idea of who you are. So I actually do not recommend being completely anonymous. Now having said that, on the flip side, if you do have your profile set up as completely anonymous, then yes, you are correct. If I go to my profile, and I'm looking at who has looked at my profile, you'll see that someone at Robin Morrison University has checked me out. They are not completely anonymous, but they have chosen not to reveal who they are. They're only revealing, in this case, the company that they work for. I don't believe, oh, this is two people who have chosen to be completely anonymous. I don't recommend it. It defeats the purpose of networking and building relationships. Next question. Uh, one more question. Isn't InMail available to non-premium members? I believe you might get one or you might get a trial number uh, as, a, as a way to entice you to upgrade because you can, you, it can be a very powerful marketing tool but when you pay, you're going to get access to more of it more regularly. Okay. Next question. Uh, that's it for questions. Uh, we have still have time to take more. If you have them, now's the time to ask. Go ahead and type them into the question box, and I'll read them for Melanie. Another quick tip while we're waiting for some questions to come in. When you're on your home screen, there are three dots over here. By default, LinkedIn now shows you top updates. They changed this about a year ago. I completely disagree with it and it annoys me, but that's what they do. 
If you want to see recent updates, you have to change it. And when you change it to recent updates, not only will you see recent updates, but LinkedIn will make suggestions of articles for you to read on Pulse. These suggestions are based on your activity on LinkedIn. For the most part, LinkedIn does a pretty good job of this, and it identifies articles that, as far as you as an expert, you would probably want to read and comment on, because it'll get you the most visibility. So that's another little secret trick in there. Any other questions, Tuli? Uh, yes. So if you're saying that if I'm completely anonymous, you can't see my picture either? Correct. If you go in, if you scroll over your photo, the top right, we go into privacy and settings. LinkedIn will ask you to confirm your password to verify that it's you. And... You want to click on this fourth one down that says select what others see when you view their profile. I do recommend this top one. People are more visual, so let them see your picture. Also, how many John Smiths are in the world? How am I supposed to know that you're the John Smith that I just had coffee with? You can choose to be anonymous in the sense of it protects your name and it just tells you the industry. That's what the person from the university had done. Or you can be totally anonymous. Again, I recommend the top one. Uh, Ms. Womack asks, can you click onto my profile now? I am curious. Uh, this is L.L. Womack. Yep. We are actually connected, so it's going to be skewed. You're going to want to have to have someone who's not connected to you uh, look at your profile. Uh, that I could probably try that. Hang on a second here. And I'll switch to my feed. Oh, we're a second uh, relational connection, so I, I can see her too. Okay. Okay. Then you are probably not set up as completely anonymous. Okay. She says, Just okay, got it. Awesome. All right. I have a question, if I may. Sure. I'm always, as, as a content explorer, I'm always interested in repurposing content, but making it effective. Can you extrapolate the relationship of posting on Pulse to posting on my blog? Should they be completely separate or overlap a little or one is shorter and the other one's longer? That is a great question and uh, Pulse is still relatively new so there is no set one way to do it for success. What I am finding is most successful for people is post the original content on your blog. And then set a tickler in your calendar for three to six months out. In three to six months out, when you revisit that article, update it. Make it relevant to that current time, so you're repurposing your content, and then post it to Pulse. Remember, Pulse is another marketing touch point, so if someone reads an article on Pulse, they click through to your profile, they click through to your blog. They want to see different content. They want to see more about you, not the same. If you think about it, your LinkedIn profile is really elaborate. So what's when they go to your website, they're choosing to leave LinkedIn, which is the primary business platform. They want to learn more about you. They want to know what makes you different and how you think that's different. And in all reality, if you think about how many people that we're connected to, an article that you share today is not going to be directly remembered by the majority of your audience in three to six months. If anything, it's going to serve as a great reminder. Okay. 
Well, that looks like that's it for questions. We've got about five minutes left. Anything else you want to add? Uh, we'll just do a quick closeout. Uh, like I said in the emails, I will not be adding your contact information to my list as a courtesy for uh, just being at the Influence Conference. So if you are interested in receiving any updates from me, you will need to contact me personally. I will send a message to... No, apparently I can't do that. So Thule, I will let you do that and uh, send my email out to everybody. Sure, I can do that. And you're welcome to contact me at time. And you're welcome to follow me on social media, and I look forward to getting to know each of you better. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to add that just a second here. Oh, and one other uh, tip. If you did not receive my LinkedIn daily card, I did mail those out that were requested at the conference. You are welcome to contact me, and I'll get yours out in the mail as well. All right. The information's in the chat box. If you look to the right, you'll see Melanie's name, her web address, and her email address in the chat box. And thank you very much, Thule, for all of your help. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to learn more about Thule, again, it's www.expandyourterritory.com. She has been a phenomenal resource to work with. And she's also on my board. So I'm, I'm, I might be slightly biased, but I do sincerely mean the, the promotion and uh, the kudos to her. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us at the webinar. This We are now concluding. Thank you.